Wicam has recently said they will stop supporting their old cameras, so for educational purposes only, I will be hacking their Home Monitor HD Pro. Now, a whole bunch of their cameras will no longer work from October 2023, but to this video we will show you how you can still access their video stream. My camera looks a little bit different because I have taken it apart, but I've re-added the ethernet port, the power connector and a very sad looking antenna that was completely unusable until I connected it to a much larger one. The servers are still up for now, so I configured my camera to work over Wi-Fi. The catch being the Wi-Fi it connected to was actually a mobile hotspot from my Windows laptop. This meant that all of the data coming in and out of the camera was passing through my laptop. If we use a software like Wireshark, we can see everything. I first used an Android app called Fing to see what ports are open on the camera. This is how I can communicate with it. We see that port 80 for HTTP and 554 for RTSP are open. RTSP is the real-time streaming protocol that we will use to see the camera's video stream. VLC Media Player can open RTSP streams, but that would be way too easy, it's password protected. So let's first find the username. As we saw, it has a HTTP port, so I opened it up in Chrome and again hit the username and password prompt. The interesting thing about this one is when you get the username wrong, it returns a packet saying unknown user. But after trying a few common usernames, I get a packet back saying wrong password. So we know the username is admin. Let's move on to finding the password. If you are lucky enough, you may come across one of these packets, which is something connecting to the RTSP stream. And right there, we can see the basic authorization token thingy. Lucky for us, this is just a base64 encoded username and password. If we shove this into Python, we can decode it and see we were correct about the username being admin, and this is genuinely the password for my camera. This is where it gets really interesting, because the password is also base64 encoded. So if we decode it, we get this luck OTV something something YCAM string. If we take the 12 characters in the middle, reverse them and add colons, we get the MAC address of the camera. This means that the password is just some function of the camera's MAC address, the MAC address that can easily be found, in fact we stumbled across it earlier when checking the ports. This is a hilarious vulnerability that's already known for some old security cameras, meaning that anyone on your network can gain access to the camera. Anyway, the final piece to the puzzle is to know what endpoint to connect to, so I just googled a few common ones and stuck them on the end of the URL until one of them worked. I think I also damaged the camera because my flat is not this blue, and I wanted to show off the cool night vision it has when I cover the light sensor. Just for fun, I ended up coding something to automate this entire process. So it scans for cameras, finds the MAC address to generate the password, loops through all of the endpoints to show them in OpenCV, and it takes about 5 seconds, which is absolutely terrifying. But the question still stands of what happens if the camera can't connect to their service anymore, when they finally get shut down. To answer this, I unplugged my router from the outside world, and we can see the time on the camera is the 1st of January 1970. Looking at the network traffic, we can see it does an NTP request to synchronize its time. But it can't actually reach any servers, so what if we made our own? To set the time, I stole someone's NTP server code, uh, got the camera connected to my Raspberry Pi following another tutorial, and we can see with no NTP server, still 1970. But as soon as we launch our NTP server, we can see the camera requests the time and we happily send it back. Then opening the stream again shows it has the correct time. Well, actually it's set to what time the Raspberry Pi thinks it is, and my Raspberry Pi is offline and can't synchronise its own time, but it's close enough. And the final issue that's been bugging me is the camera will not stop blinking red until it reaches some server. More packet sniffing shows it pings Google, it connects to some Internet of Things cloud platform, I believe, a certificate encrypted handshake stuff, so the solution to all of this, to fix the blinking light, is to get some electrical tape and just cover it up. Maybe one day I'll figure out the proper solution. <laughs> but for now, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.